Honestly, it's not completely out of the question to talk about this game's highlights. Yes, we were G2'd, but I can mention Sakurai's 1v2 under tower that caught him a kill after flash dodging a major ultimate. One more shot, one more to follow, and that's... Or I could also explain how Trick's quick feet make him an insane dodge montage candidate. But all in all, I think that by far our best moment this weekend has got to be that mid-game unexpected Baron that turned the game versus Misfits around for a while. So first of all, it's important to understand why this Baron call was made in the first place. It wasn't really the desperate shot that the shoutcasters always seem to make it out to be. In fact, SK's comp is ideal for sieging objectives as a group. And most importantly, Misfit's comp isn't. Misfit's comp has a few ways to pull off advantages, either by picking off mispositioned enemies in a numbers disadvantage with Tom Kench's ult and a CC chain after, or by flanking Vladimir to the backline and once again create a numbers disadvantage that way, since he'll most likely succeed in scurrying off carry backliners, even if just long enough for the rest of Misfits to finish off SK's frontlines. If this were Howling Abyss, SK's comp would win 9 out of 10 times. But this isn't Howling Abyss and we're most definitely not playing ARAM. So SK got to come up with quick strategies to deny misfits from pulling off their comp. So here's what happens. SK is sieging mid as 5, whilst Vladimir is pushing bot for misfits. Baron is up, and Dragon is just 40 seconds away from spawning. That's the big debate around how those late game fights. So even though SK have a skin. Gen X steps forward, and B Boy throws out his ultimate, thinking there's going to be a fight. B Boy just looking to disengage. Good sidestep on the Ezreal. SK are going to walk away there. Just ulti traded for ulti. Gen X, sadly. Taking a big chunk of life there. The bot lane though, Vladimir. Janax is once again mispositioned, especially because Vladimir is slowly coming up through the river. Razork sees an opportunity and throws out his ultimate, but Janax has both his spells up, which save his life. Essentially, Misfits have just lost their comps to forms of instant hard CC, which were traded for Gen X spells. Back and forth, we've never been seeing so many ulties used on the side of S. Misfits, not wanting to force out a fight, move to a well warded Drake. They've got Baron warded, but they're ahead by 2k gold, and their bot push is still a thing. Baron is quite the risk for SK to take, but one that was well set up due to both of Misfit's CC ultimates being down. SK just decide to go for it, knowing they've got an Ezreal, a Cassio, and a Trundle to dish out quick damage. And also, Trick's got a level advantage over Razork, so even if it comes to a smite battle, SK will have the edge. But most importantly, since Misfits are busy taking Dragon, they have no time to set their comp up the way they want it to if a fight is to ensue. SK is going as a 5-man group, so there's no one for Misfits to pick off, and Vladimir will have to accompany his team, especially since he's got no backline wards or even minions to teleport to. Misfits realize SK are doing Baron, but they can't really do anything about it. And that's the brilliance of this play. Now look at what each individual player did. GP is zoning Misfits all the time. He doesn't even hit Baron. He's delaying them and also dealing poke damage. Febivan almost doesn't fight because of Sakura. Ezreal stays inside the Baron pit the whole time, just chipping away at Baron and then Razork, always saving his E up for when absolutely necessary. Only Febivan can follow him through that wall, but as you saw, he's still busy with Sakura. Santa has two responsibilities this fight. Heal up their damage dealing elements, but even more importantly, is to save up her ultimate to deny Vlad's ultimate almost completely, which Limit does perfectly. Cassio is another Baron destroyer alongside Ezreal, but she also tries to pull Sejuani to prevent Razork from even getting inside the pit. And a big plus for her is that since no one is flanking on Misfit's side, it allows for Genex's ult to serve as a showstopper for anyone trying to come close. They're all coming from the same direction. And finally Trundle. The chills on this man to wait for Sejuani to smite first since he knows he's a level ahead. What a vital beast. The call was well made to go for Baron, but to then execute it this perfectly by everyone and preventing everyone from dying. I mean, the gold rush over the next 3 minutes speaks volumes about how important this play was. Once again, very sad that it had to end the way that it did, but it is imperative to stay positive. And just think about what failed after this point, after this unbelievable comeback in the making. Failure is a part of the road, not a sidetrack. Better days are sure to come, and we hope that you'll be there to live them out with us. Thank you. Have a nice day. Just front to back team fights. They need to find these flanks. 
and that was kind of the best case scenario for SK. And now they're reclaiming so much more control over the map. They should be able to take this tower as well. But let's see, here's the TP. Dan Dan looking for a flank. It's gonna connect, but of course, the QSS is already available for both of the bot laners. Santa grabbing one as well, too. They really do not want to get locked down by the Sidwani. But outside of uh, Sidwani, Alt, and Varasol, those are really the only ways to get a fight kicked off for the side of Misfit.